It's another Mat Day here with Teacher Jenny. Join me for another topic. This time, we are going to talk about the limits at infinity. This is the part 3 video for the limits at infinity in which we will be discussing or talking about how to find the limit at infinity when you've got a rational function. So let us have this. We have the limit of x squared plus 9 over 5x plus 2x squared minus 3 as your x approaches positive infinity. So let me just present the longest method here or the longest way and then later on we'll be tackling the shortcut for this. So there will be a long method and a short method and then it's up to you as to what you are to use. So for this one, if you try to look at this, we are just going to focus our attention on the denominator itself and then check which one is the highest exponent among the variable there. So we've got x here and x here. Highest exponent is a 2 because this one has only 1. So from there, we will be simplifying this one by simply multiplying that with 1 so that we cannot change anything on the function or we're not changing anything on the function. So what we are now multiplying the bottom part, the denominator part with, and the numerator part with is simply 1 over our variable with the highest exponent here which is x squared we do the same thing at the top we have 1 over x squared by this we're not changing anything to our function because 1 over x squared over 1 over x squared that is simply equivalent to 1 so we will now be simplifying this so this is now limit of we simplify by simply distributing our 1 over x squared here on each of the terms. So we have x squared times 1 over x squared plus 9 times 1 over x squared over 5x times 1 over x squared plus 2x squared times 1 over x squared minus 3 times 1 over x squared so that's quite long anyways we'll have the shortcut later on so please just bear with that one that will be equal to the limit of your x squared times 1 over x squared once we try to multiply fraction with a whole number um, expression all we have to do is to just simply multiply this whole expression to the numerator and then copy the denominator because the reasoning here is that once you have x squared times 1 over x squared here we have x squared a denominator of x squared is 1 multiplying that one is simply multiplying this numerators and then multiplying the denominators so basically what we're doing here is simply multiplying the whole number part to the numerator and then we're copying the denominator so we can do it like that so this one here is x squared over x squared and then we have plus 9 times 1 that's 9 we copy x squared and then over we have 5x times 1 that's 5x over x squared and then we have plus 2x squared times 1 that's a 2x squared over x squared minus 3 over x squared as your x approaches positive infinity so based from that one we are going to simplify that one first before evaluating the limit so we have x squared over x squared that's simply equivalent to 1 plus 9 over x squared over 5x over x squared we have here we can simplify that one by simply having 5x over x squared we have that as 5x over x times x. So wherein we can cancel that one. So we are left with a 5x. So we have 5x. I mean 5 over x. And then plus. You've got there 2x squared over x squared. This will be canceled. So we've got a plus 2. And then minus 3 over x squared as your x approaches positive infinity so out from there we can simply uh, distribute our limit on the numerator and the denominator part so that means to say that we can have it as 
limit of your 1 plus 9 over x squared. You can actually cut the, the steps here, cut it short, that you can do that one. What do I meant by cutting short is that you can skip on this part here and go directly for distributing the limit on each of the terms or attaching the limit to each of the terms. And then we've got limit of your 5 over x plus 2 minus 3 over x squared. Okay. And then as your x approaches positive infinity. So based from that one, we can now simply attach each of the, the terms here a limit. So this will be now equivalent to the limit of the limit of 1 as your x approaches positive infinity and then plus the limit of 9 over x squared as your x approaches positive infinity. At the bottom part, we've got limit of 5 over x as your x approaches positive infinity plus limit of 2 as your x approaches positive infinity and then we have minus limit of 3 over x squared as your x approaches positive infinity so that's quite long next this is now equal to a limit of constant is always a constant so we have one for that and a limit of your 9 over x squared as your x approaches positive infinity that is a zero this is not a short guide because on my second video, I've showed that I, I separated the common multiple. I took out the common multiple here so that I have here a 1 over x squared. So I do it like that. But actually, you can, you can simply do the shortcut of that one because once you take out 9 here, the limit of 1 over x squared is 0. So that will make the entire thing a 0. So you can do the shortcut of that. Next here, the limit of this one is still a 0, and then plus the limit of 2 is a 2, and then the limit of this is a 0, so minus 0 for that. And then we have here 0 plus 1, I mean 1 plus 0, that's a 1, over 0 plus 2 minus 0, that's a 2. So the limit of that one is 1 half. Now let's try to do the shortcut of that. Now the shortcut is using the horizontal asymptote concept in which i hope you still recall that once you say x to the power of n over x to the power of m if your m is greater than n meaning to say our m the, the exponent at the bottom part is bigger than the exponent at the top then you will have a horizontal asymptote there which is a zero that is our our uh, case once we have a horizontal um, asymptote. So a horizontal asymptote here, let me just write it as HA. Horizontal asymptote is a zero for that one once your M is greater than N. And another case here is once your M is equivalent to N, meaning to say they have the same exponent at the bottom part and at the top, then that means to say we just get our uh, coefficient here attached to our uh, x to the power of n and x to the power of m let's say for example we've got here an a we've got here a b so that would simply mean that horizontal asymptote will be an a over b or simply the coefficients of the two uh, the numerator and the denominator now another scenario here is that once you've got there an m which is less than an n meaning our exponent at the top is bigger than the exponent at the bottom part. That means to say that we don't have a horizontal um, asymptote. It does not exist. Now, in our limit, once we have uh, the, the, the third scenario, we do, we do not have an answer, which is a DNA for that one. That will be a case-to-case -case scenario because what we will be doing later on is we will be evaluating as to what will be the possible solution for that one, whether it's going to be positive infinity or negative infinity. That will be dependent on the problem. So let's start using the shortcut. So once you've got there 
an, an exponent which is greater than n, automatically our limit for that one is a zero because we've got a horizontal asymptote which is a zero. Now for m equal to n or they have the same exponent, what I'm referring to an exponent here is the highest exponent of the numerator and denominator. If they do have the same exponent, that means to say that we just get directly the coefficients of the two and that will be our limit. But if they have a bigger exponent at the numerator than the denominator, then you are to evaluate your limit uh, considering what is that leading coefficient, I mean, what is that leading term is going to be turning to be, whether it's going to be positive infinity or negative infinity. So let's try out this example first. Now notice if you've got to look at the denominator, a numerator, I mean, you've got there two as the highest exponent. The denominator, although we have 5x here, but x here is only with 1, we've got an x squared here. So this means that this one is the leading term because we've got a bigger exponent. Now, numerator is with 2 as an exponent. Denominator is with 2 as an exponent. That would simply mean that we are to take out and concentrate on that one. We just have to get the limit of your x squared over copying the sign here before the term. And so with a coefficient, so we have positive 2x squared as your x approaches positive infinity. Notice we can simply cancel that out. So our limit here will become limit of 1 over 2 as your x approaches positive infinity. And the limit of that constant is still a constant. So we have the limit of that one is 1 half. So if you try to look at that, we just have taken out the 1 here as a coefficient of x squared over the 2 here as a coefficient of your x squared on the denominator. So that is how you get the limit of that one using the shortcut. Next one, we have this example in which if you try to look at our highest exponent denominator, mean, I mean highest exponent variable here at the numerator is this one. This has a 2 on the exponent. And on the denominator, the highest exponent here is the 3, in which this one is the term. So we will be now concentrating on those two. So limit of your x squared, this is a plus here, so that should be positive, over, this is a plus, so we have a 2, positive 2x cubed, as your x approaches positive infinity. So if you try to examine, we've got a smaller uh, numerator exponent than the denominator exponent, so automatically we can just simply say that this is equal to a 0. No need for you to show any solution for that one. Automatic. Once your exponent on the denominator is bigger than the numerator exponent, then automatically that is a zero. We have limit of x cubed plus 2x squared over x squared plus 3x minus 1 as your x approaches positive infinity. So again, highest degree here. Highest exponent at the numerator is 3 and at the denominator is 2. So we will be focusing our attention on that one. So we have limit of x cubed over x squared. As your x approaches positive infinity, we can try to simply have that one as a limit of x cubed over x squared. We have 3 minus 2, that's an x to the power of 1. Or simply an x. As your x approaches positive infinity. So this will be now equal to a limit of x as x approaches to positive infinity is a positive infinity because your x there will replace that with a positive infinity. So that will be our limit for that one. <coughs> for our last example, we have the limit of 20x minus 2x squared minus 42 over 20x minus 1 as your, lim as your x approaches negative infinity. So again, highest exponent here is 2. So we have that as a limit of, uh, we will be taking the term here. So that means to say, since before, that one is a minus, 
we have that as negative 2x squared. Over, at the bottom part, this is the highest exponent, so we just have it as 20x as your x approaches negative infinity. So simplifying this one, so we've got a limit of negative 2 over 20, that will be a negative uh, 1 over 10, and then x squared over x. Uh, 2 minus 1 as an exponent here, that's a 1. So we have an x at the top. So this one is similar to also once you say an x without a 1 there. So we have a negative x over 10 as your x approaches a negative infinity. So this is equivalent to negative, your x there is negative infinity over 10. This is equal to negative times negative, that's a positive. Positive infinity over 10. Positive infinity over 10, that's a positive infinity still. So that is how you are going to evaluate your limit at infinity for rational function. And then I hope that you learned something. So please do practice because practice leads to perfection.